the minimum that I will attach to parliamentary reporting is the way you report the story. Just like these three things. It's not to say that there are no other markets. For instance, another market of democracy. The Parliament of Sierra Leone through United Nations Development Programme UNDP has concluded a two-day media training session on parliamentary reporting for members of Parliamentary Press Gallery on Tuesday 10th August and on Wednesday 11th August at the Administrative Building of Parliament in Frita. According to Deputy Director of Public Relations of Parliament, Sheko Lamintoure, the theme for the training is human capacity building for press gallery. He says the importance of the training was to capacitate journalists on their reporting skills on activities of parliamentary processes and procedures. In his presentation, the deputy director said the leadership and the administration have special regard for press gallery for their tremendous roles in reporting on the activities of the parliament of Sierra Leone. He cited Section 103 of the 1991 Constitution, which says members of the press gallery could report on the proceedings of Parliament, but should do so within the coffers of the law. Section 103 and paragraph A and B is saying that members of the press could report on the proceedings of Parliament, but they should do so within the confines of the law, and that they should not do so to find favour or otherwise in want of good faith, or do so maliciously. That's what it, it is saying, that you should report. You can take your, 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 your information from either the votes and proceedings, from the answers, or wise contemporaneous proceedings are ongoing in Parliament. But make sure you do so within the spirit of the debate, and not otherwise in want of good faith, or maliciously to, to malign a particular member of Parliament or not, or to misrepresent or misreport what had actually transpired in Parliament. So section and one would be, you know, is very important and I want he added that they believe in the press gallery as an integral partner in projecting the good image of Sierra Leone. We are reporting on the Parliament of Sierra Leone. I would say that the, the leadership and the administration of the Parliament of Sierra Leone have special regards for the press gallery for their tremendous role in reporting on the activities of the Parliament of Sierra Leone. We believe in the press gallery as an integral partner in projecting the good image of the Parliament of Sierra Leone. Giving his keynote address during the opening session of the training, the Clerk of Parliament, Honorable Dr. Omo Baran Tararoli, informed trainees for the edification of the general public that the Parliamentary Press Gallery is not the creature of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists, but rather the exclusive creation of Parliament under Section 80 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. I want to start my address by first clearly defining what the Parliamentary Press Gallery is. The Parliamentary Press Gallery is a creature of Section 80 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, just to be clear, may I refer you to the first ambit of Section 80 of the Standing Orders of Parliament, which speaks to the press. And it states, the Speaker may grant a general permission to the representative of any journal to attend the sittings of Parliament under such rules, underlined, under such rules as he may from time to time make for that purpose. In other words, it's realized who we'll make sure as an arm of parliament, in the parliamentary budget, a line is put for the parliamentary press gallery, so that you are able to run your activities on the He says that the power to reconstitute and the power to direct how the parliamentary press gallery functions is in the exclusive domain of the Speaker of Parliament. He added that the Speaker of the House of Parliament may delegate such functions to an honorable member of parliament, a leader of the House of Parliament, the clerk, 
or whosoever that is charged with the responsibility to ensure the administration of parliament runs effectively and efficiently. What function to an MP, a leader, the clerk, or whoever is charged with the responsibility to ensure that the administration of parliament runs effectively and efficiently. Ladies and gentlemen, having referred you to section 8, the first amendment, I may now proceed to clearly identify the category of persons who constitute the press gallery. I'm journalist of Sagalion, journalist of the Parliamentary Press Gallery, the Parliamentary Press Gallery of the Republic of Sagalion Parliament is composed of the following five categories of members. One, journalist accredited and who are members of Sludge. So that is one category. So journalists who are members of Sludge can be accredited by the Speaker of Parliament to sit in the press gallery. Two, all staff of the PR unit of Parliament the Clerk of Parliament also expressed that more than three years now, the Parliamentary Press Gallery has been stagnated, which he described as an unfortunate situation. In her statement, the UNDP Chief Technical Advisor to the Parliament, Honorable Jaria K. Smith, described the event as timely, adding that the two-day training section was the advocacy of the dynamic Honorable Clerk of Parliament, Dr. Omar Baran Tarari. And good democratic governance and working towards strengthening our democracy is supporting the Parliamentary Press Gallery for this two days workshop through the advocacy of the dynamic Honorable Clerk of Parliament, whose quest to transform the image of Parliament is unimaginable. Consistent with Goal 4 of the Strategic Plan of the CLM Parliament, making Parliament open, accessible, representative, inclusive, transparent and accountable to the citizens of Sierra Leone. This training came to increase public awareness and understanding of its work. To enhance Addressing the participants, the president of the press gallery, Reverend Vincent Jabi Momo, noted that the importance of the training cannot be gainsaid, but for the simple fact that parliamentary reporting is a specialized reporting that needs specific skill set for which the training geared towards human capacity building. The importance of this training cannot be gainsaid. For the simple fact that parliamentary reporting is a specialized reporting that needs special skill sets for which this training is geared towards. He said, covering parliament is an onerous but arduous task, understanding parliamentary practices and procedures, conventions, decisions, and of course the laws that create parliament, and adequately reporting on them is not always a smooth journey. For which this training is geared towards. Covering parliament is an onerous but arduous task, understanding parliamentary practices, procedures, conventions, decisions, and of course the laws that create parliament and adequate reporting on them is not always a smooth journey. As journalists, we have been constrained with adequate knowledge, inappropriate reporting on parliament, thus the need for this training is timely and enormously necessary. He said, as journalists, they have been constrained with adequate knowledge and inappropriate reporting on parliament, so the need for the training was timely and enormously necessary. Then it's not always a smooth journey. As journalists, we have been constrained with adequate knowledge, inappropriate reporting on parliament, thus the need for this training is timely and enormously necessary. I urge my colleagues to make good use of this opportunity by being attentive, punctual, attractive, because the knowledge that is to be gained will be useful to in our sojourn as parliamentary journalists. 
Some of the participants had this to say. That was organized by Parliament with support from UNDP. The training is a capacity building training workshop. It's purely for journalists that are reporting for Parliament. The essence of the training basically is to ensure that reporters or journalists who are reporting on parliamentary proceedings, parliamentary sittings, oversights and committee meetings are well off with uh, basically how the process goes on and how they're supposed to report on it. Remember, reporting in parliament requires special skills. So it is only when you attend training, such trainings, you'll be able to know basically what are some of the issues, what you need to know, what you need to do in order to ensure that you work. You know, parliamentary reporter is different from those reporters going out at Kube, Kinjimi, and to do reporting. Um, it's different. When you come as a journalist in parliament and you want to be a parliamentary reporter, you must be uh, credible. Um, like the, 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 the interim president told us that credible is sense in your dressing, the way you report in different areas. You have to be credible, right? I learned also that you have to do more research as a parliamentary reporter. Not every time, not everything that you need to report, not everything that happens here in parliament you need to report. There are some things you don't need to report about it. You need to listen to other city. The other city has been given to you for you to do that. Reporting for Beyond Borders Network Television, I am Mohamed Amaragando.